Hello and welcome to Think Watercolour. Uh, today I'll be painting from this reference photo. Uh, I took this picture of a woodland stream recently on a walk in Sandyway in Cheshire. Uh, I like the way the tree brings your eye down from the top left to the bottom right and then the bright reflection and the fallen logs draw your eye back to, the, to where the stream vanishes. I thought this image would make a good uh, subject for demonstrating how to interpret a complex scene and how to capture the lightest colours of the undergrowth and bracken whilst maintaining a good level of contrast. Taking on subjects like this is a good way to improve your watercolour skills and to make you think carefully about your approach. Always remember it's just paper and coloured water so if you mess things up Learn from your mistake and go again. I've sketched out the image. Uh, this is uh, Saunders Waterford 300 gram rough paper. And I'm going to start by just masking out the um, areas of the uh, lighter bracken and twigs that are surrounding the scene. Uh, so that I can retain the whiteness of the paper so that uh, once I've finished with building the lighter lights to the darker darks I can then make use of the um, the white paper just to gently tone the uh, the bracken take out the whiteness but um, to do the masking out I'm going to use a ruling pen uh, you can buy masking fluid with applicators uh, and I have used them in the past. I don't happen to have one handy, so uh, old school, I'll be using a ruling pen, and I'm just going to show you how I do that now. In order to get the uh, thin strips of, uh, of all the bracken and branches in the background, uh, I'm just doing thin lines with the ruling pen, as you can see here. Uh, and I'm not trying to slavishly copy the, uh, the photograph, it's just an indication of, of what was there and uh, it's, it's a fairly loose imp interpretation that I'm aiming for. So this is pretty boring so I'm going to move forward and here you can see that uh, I've finished adding masking fluid. I've also put some areas where there are going to be some uh, green leaves Just uh, wetting the area where the uh, water is uh, with some, some clean water and I'm going to drop in some cerulean blue with a touch of cobalt blue for parts of the blue sky that are reflected in the stream. This is sepia, a very thin mix of sepia for the lightest of the uh, background uh, washes behind all the bracken. Um, I've just added a touch of burnt sienna as well just to vary the, uh, the tonal values and the colour. Just keeping it simple and loose, it's just an impression of what's there. As I say, I'm not uh, not trying to do an accurate copy, there's just too much detail to do that. Uh, it would end up looking rather overworked if, uh, if I tried to paint every single piece of uh, bracken and twig that's there. Just add a little bit more sepia for the darker area where the, uh, the bank meets the stream, a little bit of shadow there. This is jadeite green, again a very weak mix uh, with the sienna just to put in some of the, uh, loosely put in some background trees and foliage. It's pretty vague, uh, I want to keep it simple, very impressionistic.
I've just mixed up some uh, lemon yellow and cobalt teal for the uh, green that's uh, on top of the uh, parts of the the trio hanging the stream. Uh, this is uh, yellow ochre just for some areas of the tree mixing in some pretty neat sienna for the darker parts of the tree. And the colours blend together a little bit. Try and pick up the roughness of the paper with the uh, side of the rigger to create the look of the, uh, the bark on the tree. Just going a bit darker with a uh, touch of neutral tint for the underside of the, uh, the tree where it's really dark and in shade. I often leave the darkest darks the very last part of the painting, but I wanted to get the uh, the tree uh, blocked in so I know what I'm working around in terms of uh, creating the reflection and the shadow. Again, just gently blending some sepia into the mix, get a nice tonal value from the darkest dark at the bottom of the tree to the lighter part at the top. Just carefully painting around that uh, foreground log that's lying on the bed of the stream on the right hand side. For the reflection of the tree in the stream, I'm trying to uh, keep it loose and not have a very straight edge because the, uh, the, st the stream is a moving stream and uh, you get ri little ripples in the reflection too. Just varying the colour a little bit, it's getting a bit lighter as it gets closer to us. Just adding a few more ripples in the stream. Just reflecting some of the uh, foliage behind the uh, behind the tree that, that's out of shot. Just using a number three rigger here for the ripples in the stream. Uh, riggers are great for doing uh, things like this because they've got a nice flexible tip and uh, I just prefer to use them. You can use a dagger brush, uh, you could even use a round, but I just find the rigger, uh, the springiness of the, uh, of the brush just makes it easier to uh, paint ripples and pick up the texture of the paper if you use the side of the brush. I'd like to point out this is this is the way I'm painting this scene. It's not necessarily the right way. I mean, it's, every artist would paint this in their own style. Uh, the more you paint, the more you will develop a style. And um, there's no right or wrong way to paint. Uh, there are there's good practice and bad practice in terms of you're not not painting too wet into wet paper. As the paper dries, that your mix should be uh, 
stronger and you can paint uh, paint damp into wet but uh, the minute you start adding water you're going to end up with um, cauliflowers and runbacks so good practice like that is fine but uh, style wise you develop it as you go along the more you paint the better you'll get and the more you'll develop your own style as I just said this is um, a mixture of uh, burnt sienna and yellow ochre just for the lighter part of this log that's lying on the riverbed just adding a touch of sepia and some burnt sienna on the underside I always try to paint images like this with a uh, a limited palette keep it simple try to use complementary colors wherever possible if uh, if the subject allows good example of complementary is the uh, the green of the lichen on the tree against the the brown of the tree itself they're pretty complementary and it just adds adds a little bit of sub subtlety to the painting I'm just starting to block in some of the darker areas on the undergrowth on the uh, on the bank on the left now start to build up from lightest light to darkest dark dropping in more paint wet in wet in certain areas let it blend together it's um, it's a really complex uh, scene in terms of what's there but uh, you can simplify it with uh, this wet in wet technique and once I take the masking fluid off I can then add a little bit more detail there's a log on the left just fallen by the edge of the uh, the bank I'm just trying to uh, bring that out blending from dark to light And as I add these darks, you can see the uh, the reflection in the river starts to come alive. Just adding a little bit of touch of green on, along that uh, tree trunk. Just trying to uh, bring out the reflection and the wetness of that log that's in the stream. This is a number zero rigger I'm using here. Again, nice springy tip to it. Just darkening some of the uh, trees in the background, again keeping it pretty vague. Really loose wet and wet washes. Mostly sepia and a uh, touch of uh, jadeite green just for the, uh, the foliage that's there in the background. Again I'm keeping it pretty vague and, and soft. I've taken out the masking fluid now and as you can see it's easier to uh, work on these leaves uh, and the the bracken this is um, that same mix of 
teal and lemon yellow just for the lighter leaves. I'll add some darker bits in a minute. Keeping it pretty vague, just roughly following what's on the uh, on the photograph, but um, I'm not trying to paint every leaf. This is a very, very weak mix of yellow ochre. I'm just going over gently so that I don't disturb the earlier washes. Very, very lightly touching the paper with the, uh, with the brush. Um, just to take the whiteness off the, uh, the masked out areas. This will dry lighter anyway. But then you can see, you can see that it starts to, sh to look like the bracken that's in the photograph. Now that's dry, I'm just starting to add some, with a number zero rigger, just some darker branches and bracken so that we get that contrast. It's a messy image and it, uh, it, it lends itself to very loose painting. I'm just using a pretty neat uh, sepia for this. Just adding some uh, darker patches with some uh, sepia, quite a strong mix, fairly thick. And I'm just going to put a little bit of shadow around some of the leaves just to uh, bring them out and lift them from the background a little bit and uh, just make them a little bit more three-dimensional. Not being too specific, just suggestion of uh, shadows under some of the leaves. Again, keep it fairly loose and simple. A few darker patches in the uh, undergrowth. Just adding this dark shadow area just lifts those leaves off the background a little bit and uh, makes it a little bit more believable. It's still an impression rather than painting individual leaves but just uh, the shadows just help to lift the uh, the leaves off the off the background as I said before Just doing a little bit of uh, touching up, minor tweaks here and there, just to uh, finish the painting off. Just strengthening a few darker areas, and I pretty much think we're uh, we're done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this uh, demonstration uh, useful. Uh, always challenge yourself with subjects like this and I hope I've shown that you can take a pretty complicated and complex subject and uh, simplify it and uh, still get a good representation. Uh, I hope I've caught, captured the uh, reflection in the stream and uh, the detail quite well without being too pedantic about it. If you like the video please give it a like. Um, and uh, do subscribe and hit the notification bell for future videos and thanks again for watching